say hello. Thank you for joining us here at the ACC Community Center. I'm Jeannie, uh, your guide for Gentle Yoga at 2 p.m. And for the next hour, we'll be working on our balance today, our center of gravity, and how we might be able to accommodate any shifting changes. Um, you know, part of our practice in yoga is just getting in tune with the body, uh, noticing how it feels, and being able to kind of figure out, um, you know, where your, your body might be going. So when you start establishing that connection, it's a lot easier to uh, maybe if you stumble or fall, maybe if you're um, you know, in an, a precarious situation where you're unbalanced, you can feel that, you can sense that, and your body can kind of uh, reconfigure a home base, um, a position where you're recalculating uh, that balance and coming back to a centered, supported position. So that being said, we'll go ahead and start at the back of the mat. In today's class, um, we're also going to want a chair or a wall nearby uh, that you can go to so you can think about that when we do our balance um, exercises. We just want to make sure we have something in case our balance is a little off, that we have something to hold on to, a wall, a chair, something. So um, that'll come later in our practice, but for now, at the back of the mat, let's begin to arrive. Whatever led us to class today, we can wait and just start connecting to our inner state, the beginning of which is the breath. Just start to slow down the breath by just simply observing how the air moves in to the body how the move, how the air moves out of the body. Let's go ahead and bring our left palm to rest on our chest, right palm underneath the belly button. Start to begin a little more conscious effort in breathing in, noticing the body fill up in the air, in the lungs, Perhaps feeling that lengthening at the top of the inhale. And then as you begin to slowly control the exhale, think about pushing out all the air just by engaging the core. You can even bring the belly hand to press just a little gently towards the spine. With these slower movements, hopefully you'll have a better connection to the breath cycle, the inhales, the pauses, the exhales. All right, let's go ahead and bring our hands down. Oh, and we have the breath. I'm sorry, one more thing. Just go ahead and bring the sound of the ocean to the back of the throat. Widen the throat, have a big sigh. And just establish that audible connection to the yoga breath. We can go ahead and bring our hands down now. Go ahead and lift up the toes, the heels. We'll reset our mountain. Starting to bring our breath and movement, our body movement together. Let's go ahead and inhale, starting to feel a little taller in our mountain, gathering the energy as it lifts through to the top of the head. And then on the exhale, slowly feeling that energy reverse course, feeling more centered, more rooted as that energy returns to the mat, to the earth. With the next inhale, we'll start to move the center of gravity towards our toes. Stopping at that tipping point, and then using another breath to slowly move the center of gravity at the soles of our feet towards the heels. Go ahead and give yourself a couple of breath cycles just to find that toe to heel stability and support. And you'll return to center somewhere at the top of the ankles, dipping into our home base of mountain. 
we'll go ahead and start lifting upwards once more, all the way up, and then exhale, roll the weight towards the outer right edge of the feet. Inhale to center, or all the way to the other side. Use a two or a three part breath. See what works for you, just to find that left to right movement at the ankles, at the soles of the feet. And we'll return to center, back in base position of mountain. Sinking in, let's go ahead and reset. Lengthening through the legs a little taller each time we return. Start making small circles with the body Somewhere at about the ankles, we're radiating circles, getting larger towards the edge of our feet. The perimeter identified. We can go ahead and tighten in the circles. Come on back to center, like water going down a drain. Inhale, reset the mountain once more. Small circles in the opposite direction. Giving ourselves just a few breaths. Make that orbit around the soles of the feet. And we'll return home, back to center in mountain when we're ready. Go ahead and lift the feet if you need, but reset, making any movement that feels good. We'll start our um, movement at about the ankles and the hips. We're just widening the feet a little bit wider than hips distance apart and just start to pivot the upper torso, just swiveling the shoulders from side to side. And as you move more of the front of the chest towards one side, make sure that foot lifts, pivoting on the heel, follow the foot lifting, pointing the toes in the same direction that you're swiveling to. And with that easy momentum, relaxed arms, you might find just have a gentle tapping of the arms, finding loose shoulders, ankles, maybe hips, giving some movement that we allow to peter out and come back to a standstill, returning to mountain. Let's go ahead and move on up. As we're moving towards the shoulders now, we're getting a little longer, a little taller, See if you can gently lift up, straightening the legs as you can. You can keep a micro bend if you need. And as you're lifting upwards, just noticing if your feet are rolling outward, press gentle, even distribution of weight to all points of the soles of the feet. See if you can lengthen, find that center of gravity somewhere at the top of the ankles. And we'll go ahead, palms facing forward. Inhale, lifting the shoulders towards the ceiling. Exhale, roll them back and let them melt down the back fully by the end of that exhale. We're doing a total of four breath cycles to slowly explore how our shoulders are feeling, lifting them up, pausing a brief moment before we exhale them back and down. Use your ocean breath. See if you can facilitate that release after your four, we'll go ahead and repeat another round, but this time forward on the exhale. Still letting those shoulder blades melt down the back on the exhale. And still finding lift and inhaling all the energy so that you can exhale, release anything that energy finds on its way through the body. When you're done, We'll go ahead, return to our mountain, lifting anything that needs to be lifted if you're gripping the feet, gripping the mat, and moving on up towards the ears and the throat. And the last bit of warm up, just lifting up through the crown of the head, gentle tuck of the chin, palms facing forward. Let's go ahead and inhale deeply and then exhale over towards the right side. Right ear dipping towards the right shoulder without lifting the left shoulder. Both shoulders are in line. As we inhale, we're finding length. As we exhale, release. Turn the gaze if you haven't already. In a total of four breath cycles here as well, just to help release through the left side of the neck. 
You might even find your eyes have a benefit in releasing by just simply resting with each exhale, just a little further maybe, or to the rightmost of your vision. Inhaling, bringing the eyes back up, top of the head lifting towards the center of this, towards the ceiling, and then exhale over to the other side. Right shoulder still in line with the left. Inhale deeply, exhale, turn the gaze if you haven't already. Some days, if you've slept on your neck um, in a different position than you're used to, it might be a little, a little stiff. See if you can breathe, release length into that side of your neck. Sometimes it's just that conscious effort of releasing, of letting go. That really helps. After your last exhale, let's go ahead and bring the eyes, the gaze. The head lifts completely at the top of the uh, inhale. So all you have to do is exhale. Let the eyes float towards the top of the mat. And give yourself another four breath cycles here. Seeing, seeing if you can find length in the back of the neck without sacrificing the space under the chin. A deep inhale, still feeling that upward lifting feeling, just that slight diagonal tilt of the crown of the head. And let the tops of the shoulders be relaxed. Let those shoulders just roll away from the spine, back and down. After the last breath cycle, go ahead and inhale, bring the eyes, the gaze, the head completely back up past the midline towards the ceiling. Once you can see the ceiling, stop craning the neck. Give yourself four breath cycles here. See if you can release through the throat. Open the mouth. You can make small O to a larger O opening. You can gently sway the lower jaw. See if you're holding tension in the center of the brow line. Maybe the tongue can just loll out with a deep sigh. <sighs> and after your last exhale, we'll go ahead and bring the eyes, the gaze back to center and shake out any activated muscles that haven't been released. We're going to go ahead and move into our walking meditation. So sometimes we just need to release from the pose before before we start our new one. So coming down in our mountain, feeling like we're reaching with our arms, our fingers. Go ahead and inhale, extend the arms upwards, lifting at the top of the inhale, engage the core, hinging at the hips, micro bending the knees if you need, fold at the hip line, come on down. Halfway down, you can always walk the hands or just let the back unfold. If your legs are really stiff, you might need a deeper bend to the knees. We're trying to find that hips, um, the hip orientation over the heels as that center of support, that column of, uh, of support. And as our torso is uh, leaning towards the front, if you need to bring a little more weight towards the heels, that'll hopefully give you a little more balance. In today's class, we're focusing on balance. So notice how your center of balance is here from the hips down in this folded position. We're going to slowly roll up with the next inhale, gently bending the knees if we need to. Go ahead and slowly walk the hands up or just inhale, starting to bring the torso, the spine straightening, vertebra stacking one at a time. And at the top, we just give ourselves a breath or two, let the blood rush to our head, um, come back to the head, <laughs> and we'll go ahead and fold one more time. Reaching downward with our fingers, let's go ahead and inhale the arms upwards, lifting at the top of the inhale. Exhale, engage the core and hinge at the hips to fold. Fully exhaled here. It's a little shorter this time. We're only staying about three breath cycles. And as usual, just give yourself any movement that might help you 
release in the upper body while you still maintain the center and the hips down to the heels. One more deep inhale, one more deep exhale, and you can slowly roll back up with the next inhale or come on up with a straight back, engaged core. At the top, hands meet in prayer, hands down, heart center. Let's go ahead and start our walking meditation. Inhaling right foot up, exhaling the right foot down. Heel, ball of foot, toes. Inhale, left foot up. Exhale, the heel, ball of foot, and toes of the left foot down. If you feel a little wobbly, that's okay. Press into the palms, engage the core once more, and that might help bring you back. If not, don't worry about it. Just Come on back, we'll meet at the top of the mat. Inhaling, watch the fingertips rise, pressing into the palms. At the top, let's exhale, release the palms and hinge at the hips, core engaged. Fully ex exhaled here, inhale, press into the shins, into the mat, wherever your hands have contact. Maybe it's the forearms on the thighs. Just try to lengthen through the back. And then exhale, release. Bend the knees if you need to. Come on down to your fold and deeply bend the knees if you need and bring a foot back, another foot, and maybe a few steps back to bring the feet back to the back of the mat and the shoulders. We're going to inhale them over the wrists and then let's bring our knees down, untucking the toes. We're in our modified half high plank. And here, we're just making sure our shoulders hopefully are not too far forward. Today they are, for me, so I'm just going to press on the tops of my feet, my shins, lift up my knees and just walk them back a little bit, my shoulders. And here, engaging the core is key. We wanna have an engaged core, keep the back safe. One more deep inhale. One more deep exhale. Let's tuck the toes. Inhale the hips up and exhale. Push the hips back to our first down dog. The heels may lower, but they don't have to touch the mat. And here we're giving ourselves about five breath cycles. See where we are. We want our ears somewhere in between our upper arms if possible. We want to have an upside down V eventually, but if you're upside down, U is there, that's fine. Focus on lifting up at the hips, carving out that uh, core, sticking the belly button to the spine. And as you're lifting that upwards, you can think about gently rooting down at the feet, at the hands, lengthening at the back of the legs and keeping the bend to the knees if they're tight. Arms should be nice and long. And if you can get the crooks of the elbows to face forward, it'll keep the shoulders from rolling into your ears. One more inhale, let's look to our hands with our eyes and exhale, bend the knees deeply if you need and walk the hands to the fold at the back of the mat. If you're a little farther forward, you can always step back, keeping the knees bent if you need. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, float the chest towards the fold, towards the mat. And then inhale, engage the core, press it in the feet, firm up the legs, come on up with a slow roll up or straight back. Inhaling hands above the head, exhaling hands down heart center. And we'll do this one more time, another walking meditation. Inhale, right foot up. Exhale it down. Inhale, left foot up. Exhale it down. In a slow, soft gaze, slow walking meditation, in a soft gaze, as we walk to the top of the mat. And at the top, go ahead and look down at the fingertips, pressing into the palms. Inhale. At the top, separate the palms. Engage the core and exhale, hinge at the hips, fully exhaled at the bottom of the fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Place the hands at either side of the feet. Step the legs back. Inhale, shoulders over the wrists. Nice, long, high plank. Heels to the crown of the head, nice and strong. One long diagonal line. Inhaling. Engaging that core, exhaling. Inhale, let's go ahead and bring the hips up. 
exhale, press into the extended arms and come back into your down dog. You can give yourself three good deep breath cycles here to make any movements that feel good in your down dog. Maybe a deep bend to the knees to stretch out the calves, the Achilles heels, the arches. Maybe that nice roll to the toes and then gently lowering the heels down as you reconnect uh, the three points of your down dog. Hands and feet downward as the hips move upward. Inhale, let's look to our, eye, uh, to our hands with our eyes. Bend the knees and let's walk the hands to the back of the mat. To the fold, fully exhaled here. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees if you need, engage the core and come on up, a slow roll up or a straight back. Exhaling hands down heart center and finally down to the side. And giving ourselves a little bit of water, air conditioning or just it's a little drier. I don't know if it's cold or if it's hot, but some days it's both. But either way, hydration seems to really help, especially as we're aging, keeping us, uh, uh, what is that, supple and limber and focused. Water and hydration really helps with our mind's focus. And physiologically, that's going to affect um, our, uh, our body's ability to stay balanced, to stay focused. So actually they, they uh, affect, they influence one another. So let's go ahead and start that. As we're done with our um, walking meditation, let's bring the chair nearby for our balance poses. Today's class is all about balance. Um, we're going to be finding how our balance feels while we're standing, while we're um, about to sit down, and as we make it to a tabletop position, as well as while we're in boat. And then finally, while we're on our belly, we're going to be on all different points of balance today. But I'm just bringing the chair nearby because in tree, you have that option. Uh, if your balance is uh, something you're working on, just keep it nearby. You might stand it behind your chair. You might stand next to a wall, something that you can bring your hand out to and right yourself in case you feel like you're leaning. Now, um, I like to have the chair oriented in this position. And because I'm on a um, slippery uh, floor, it, if you have a rug or a yoga mat, you want at least two of those chair legs on there. In all of these, um, you know, if it's too much for you, I, I need to remind everyone more too. Go only as you're able to. If it's not feeling like it's right for you, you know, come back up in your um, position and wait for us in a safer position. So coming here um, with a chair, uh, next to us if we need. I'm going to start um, tree in this position with this orientation just so that you have an idea of, of um, how the body uh, should be stacking and aligning. And oftentimes um, I've demonstrated tree with blocks. So you're welcome to do that. But as you can uh, stand in mountain, hips distance are our feet. We're going to feel where that center of gravity is. We often talk about the heels having that center over the heels, from the hips down to the heels. See if you can find that. And if you're not sure about that, just start to roll the weight, like in our warm-ups, towards the toes. And then you'll start to feel your heels lifting. Coming on back down, you'll feel more of your heels supporting you. Hopefully you'll feel that center from the hips down to the heels, somewhere at the top of the ankles. Another thing to think about is the orientation of the hips. Oftentimes we talk about flexed hips. When we're sitting a great deal, we'll start to have these tented hips. As we are returning to mountain, we're trying to lengthen upwards and gently press those hips forward so that we have the ankles under the knees, the knees under the hips, hips under the shoulders. It's just a natural way for gravity to bear down on our head and have the body stacked and supported just as naturally as it's meant to be. So here, we're gonna go ahead and play with our balance. Start to shift the weight now towards the left standing leg. Not too far from that chair or that wall, hopefully, but you're 
hopefully finding that center of gravity now, not in both legs, but now on the left side of the body. And then you can lift the right sole of the foot just slightly off. We're not jetting out our left hip. Oh, I need a little bit of balance too. It's been a while since I've done tree. It's been a while since we've played with our balance on one foot. All right, so once you do that, let's go ahead and put our foot back down. We feel that column of support in our left leg. You can go ahead and kick it forward. A couple of times is nice. Out on that same side before we cross it over gently. And that's just to help release that glute in all those leg muscles. In tree, we just uh, use those very, uh, we use those a great deal and we, sometimes we forget to turn them off. So that's a nice way to reset. All right, let's go ahead and bring the center of gravity once more to the left side. And this time, lifting the right heel externally rotating the right hip, and we'll start to walk the ball of the foot, the right foot towards that left ankle. So we can rest the right heel on the left ankle. Hopefully your left hip is not jetting out where it's, it's still one solid column of support with the left leg. And that right ball foot is just sort of like a kickstand helping to support the body. Tightness in the right hip is going to determine the orientation of your knee. Usually if we're tight, we're gonna be out at an angle. Eventually if we're open, we might be more uh, in the same parallel plane as our other hip. So standing here, finding that balance. We've been here for about three to five breath cycles. We should find our edge. And here we can bring the hands to heart center. Engaging the core, especially as we move upward. As you find that balance changes, we have the foundation. Now we're bringing a little change to the top of our support here. As you bring the hands to heart center, pressing gently towards the center, we can raise our hands, grow out our branches, and now our balance is just slightly changed. So you can feel that at the base. You can feel it how uh, the body kind of changes in that way. Inhaling, we're reaching upwards, Exhale, let's bring the hands down, heart center, finally down to the side. Internally rotate that right hip and gently let that right foot land. And then we can deactivate the left side of our leg, hopefully, bringing a little standing weight to the right leg. Just go ahead and kick out any residual activation of the left side of your body. Left leg, left glutes, left glute, glutes, <laughs> and then also, you can just gently let the leg swing. Just relax it. Keep a slight flexion to the foot so it doesn't, uh, your toes don't drag. But it just helps to open up that left hip. Alrighty, let's go ahead and come back to our mountain. And we're going to move to the other side and do tree once more. And I'll just change directions here. Changing orientation of my chair as well so I have the back just in case. <clears throat> standing once more in our mountain. We're going to bring standing weight to our right leg this time. And once you find you've got things stacked, we're really looking for a gentle stacking of this right uh, leg, the ankle under the knee, under the hip, and hopefully our torso isn't pitched forward, so eventually our shoulder should be over our right hip as well. We're not locking out the right leg or any leg when we're in tree. Hopefully just a gentle stacking of those, um, a strong stacking of those joints still provides us good circulation, not hyperextending the back of the, the knee. Alrighty, so here we are. Our stability is established. Let's go ahead and lift the left sole of the foot slightly off of the floor. It's just hovering above. We're trying to establish that center. Did you noticeably lean over a little more than you needed to? Did your alignment move? We're trying to find that good column of support so we can keep the left foot lifted. And you might tap down a little bit. Let's go ahead and completely come out at this point. 
But as we're standing, finding that center, lifting that um, sole of the foot, it's just hovering it. Sometimes we have to tap down in case. Anyhow, let's go ahead and release. Give yourself a gentle forward kick of the right foot. And then the right side before you cross to the left side. Gentle bounce, a jiggle, anything to release. And then we'll come into more, a more traditional tree with this next round. Standing once more in mountain, inhaling deeply, bringing standing weight to the right side of the body. Once you have that connection down, let's go ahead and lift the left heel internally, excuse me, externally rotate your left hip. Bring it out before you start walking that left heel over to the right ankle. And find that tripod support. Most of the support is with that right leg, the right side of the body. The left ball of foot really just like a kickstand to help balance. And once you're there, just in, simply engaging the core will help to kind of tighten everything up, give you a good sturdy support line. And as we're here for about three to five breath cycles to find that edge, seeing how open our left hip is and the, minding that, we'll go ahead and bring our core, engaging it and bring the hands to heart center. As your palms touch, Feel the engagement of the core. Inhale, press into the palms, core still engaged. We're growing our hands upward. And if for some reason it doesn't speak to you, you don't need to do that. Just stay where you are able to maintain your balance. You can open up the branches and breathe. Slow, soft gaze somewhere off in the distance. Engaged core. Just a couple more breaths. One more inhale, bring the hands together on the exhale, hands down, heart center. Bring the hands off to the side. Let's go ahead and internally rotate the left hip, then let that left foot land. And give yourself that counter movement you need with this gentle bouncing, a gentle kickoff forward to the right before you go to the opposite side. Same side leg before you go to the other side. All righty. And as we're done with that, we're moving into our chair now and I'm going to uh, just demonstrate as we've been in chair before and um, you start your chair from our mountain position here. Feet are about hips distance apart. But the, again, it's that issue of the balance. Where are we finding that? So typically what we do is we can raise our arms to help us with that uh, balance change that's going to occur as we dip downward, bending the knees, so that our hips just move straight down and our arms might be forward a little more. Notice if you move from an up a vertical to a slightly slanted positioning of the arms, how does that affect the base, the feet? How does that affect your core and the balance and that center? So here we are. You can bring the arms down if you want, but focusing on the hips now engaging the glutes, engaging not just the glutes, but the quads, but mainly the <laughs> glutes. See if you're sticking out your tailbone or tucking under the tailbone, you can slightly pull under the tailbone and helping you here in our chair if there's any undue stress to the lower back. Tuck under the tailbone, round out that lower back slightly, and you'll feel hopefully a little release there as well. Core is engaged. If you're good here, we're going to go ahead and roll the toes up 
And if you didn't feel much of a change in your um, balance in your center, that's good. You have it mostly where it needs to be, near to the heels, somewhere above the ankles. Go ahead and bring the toes back down. Lengthen, inhale, straighten the legs and give yourself any movement to release activated muscles from that pose. We'll go ahead, I'm going to just turn to the other side and you can play with the um, blocks if you'd like uh, to support your heels, but we're gonna roll up onto the toes, lifting the heels with our next chair. So, standing in our mountain once more, a little longer, a little taller, see if you can give that interesting just lift from the feet lengthening through the legs up the spine see if the hips are under the shoulders under the ears you can feel that if you have a mirror you can see that maybe by just turning and then relax see if you can just hold the body in this upright position without too much uh, active holding and then we'll go ahead and with our second chair Inhale, arms up. Exhale, engage the core and just bend the knees until you feel the glutes engage, your core engage. The deeper you go in your bend, the more challenging it is. But if we're just dealing with our balance and our core, you just need to dip down until you feel the glutes engage. That's all. And then we're going to use the next breath. Inhale, start to roll the weight towards the balls of the feet so you lift the heels. If you don't want to, you can just stay in your chair. Engage the core and breathe. See if you can make it as effortless as possible and still maintain this basic position. One more deep inhale. One more deep exhale, engage that core. Inhale, we'll straighten the legs. Exhale, we'll lower the heels. Bring the hands down <laughs> wherever they were and just let them dangle like noodles if you need to. You can do something like that and just let the limbs dangle. All right. And as we're moving downward, um, and you can see too with this chair being here, you can practice that chair at any time. The deeper that you go, and you'll always have the chair underneath you. That's the nice thing in case you need to actually sit down. But even that motion of getting up from the chair and sitting down on a chair, uh, those muscles, um, they can be overworked over time as we age. So just something to keep healthy, nice and limber when we stretch, nice and strong as we're developing our core. And We'll move on down to the mat. Our next position is a alternate limb lift from our tabletop position. So we're going to support our shins and our wrists, palms. Now I like to use a blanket for that. If you have uh, any other uh, way of doing that, we just want to make sure as we come on down, you can fold, you can bend the knees, Start to come into a squat. If you have a favorite way of coming down, you can do that. I like to come down from a fold and then squat and then walk the hands forward. Now, if uh, my wrists are really um, sensitive, uh, that 90 degree angle might be a little too much. You might need to move the knees back and have less of a 90 degree angle of the shoulders over that wrist. Instead of here, maybe just a little further back. Maybe the hands just out forward without the support under the mount of the thumbs. Just depends on what feels good with your wrists. Next thing we want to do is keeping the shoulders somewhat above the wrists or a little bit behind, but the knees underneath the hips and the tops of the feet and the shins really supporting, giving uh, us this uh, uh, support to keep our upper body upright and balanced just uh, right over our wrists and our knees. So give yourself a deep breath here, in, and a deep breath out. And on that exhale, you're engaging the core, hopefully, helping to uh, push out that air. 
Now give a slight bend of the elbow so you're not just uh, really extending through the arms uh, more than you need to. Just a slight bend to the elbows. We're stacking the shoulders, hopefully safely above the, the wrists so that we can just have that nice gentle bend to the elbows. With the next inhale, we're going to lift the right palm and the left knee. Just hover it above. See how that changes the balance. And your body is hopefully adjusting, trying to compensate for that change in balance and center. Go ahead and bring the right hand, left shin down. Readjust your tabletop position if you uh, got out of line. <laughs> Sometimes that happens in the transition. And with the next inhale, we're going to go ahead and lift the left hand and the right knee. Just hover it. Just see if you can lift it without changing too much of the um, position here so that we can find the balance. We can feel that change in the balance and how we, uh, the body accommodated the change. Hopefully you're pressing a little more into the left uh, shin, top of the ankle, and the core is engaged. Go ahead and bring that left hand and left shin knee down. Slowly bring the hips back to a child's pose if that's available. It's just a short one to help stretch out the shoulders. And your hips don't have to touch the heels. We're going to come on back to our tabletop position. And in the second round, we're going to extend the limbs as is available. So if you're still working on just maintaining the balance, you don't have to lift the arm and the leg and extend them outwards. That's just an extra uh, part. Uh, just work on your tabletop positioning of uh, balancing on, you know, opposite hand and knee. So with this next round, we'll go ahead and breathe deeply, inhaling, start to lift the right foot, uh, hand and the left knee, and start to extend. See if extending one limb, arm usually, and then the leg, if that helps you, you might just have the extension of one limb and the other one sort of unfolding as it comes along. Whatever the case is, giving ourselves about three full breath cycles and then we can bring our right hand and our left shin knee back down. Go ahead and reset your tabletop position. Gently um, side curl to the left and that's just you bringing your left shoulder and left hip a little closer together in that horizontal plane and then bring the shoulders and hips back into alignment of your tabletop position. All righty, let's go ahead and do this on the left side. So if you notice um, any uh, uh, change in your tabletop positioning, make sure you're supported well now. And inhaling, we're going to lift the left hand, right shin, right knee, and then slowly start to extend to our best ability. If you can do a full extension, hopefully you're pointing your toe. See if that changes your support. How does that feel when you flex the toe? Extending the toes. And go ahead, let's bring the left hand down and right shin, right knee down. So those are, I'm sorry, those are little things that you can do. You can bend the uh, feet and toes just to give yourself a little more extension if that feels good. Now, while we're in tabletop here, we're going to give ourselves a slight curl to the right. And maybe it's not much of a right shoulder to right hip curling, but you'll hopefully find a nice uh, stretch to the left side now as you're curling towards the right. Come on back to center, and we'll come down to our child's pose once more as a reset. See if your hips can meet the heels. If not, that's okay. We're just stretching here for a moment, lengthening through the arms, through the back. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring the hands up and see if you can shift your hips to one side. We're gonna meet in a base bridge position while we're still sitting up though. So I guess that'll look something like this. We'll come up, sitting upright instead of laying on our back with our knees bent. Now, we're going to each have a different version of this. So what we're shooting for here, what we're aiming for is 
the feet eventually making their way downwards. So if you need to bring the heels a little closer, that's fine into our base bridge position. We want to lengthen through our upper chest here as best that we can. We might have to lean back more in order to have that lengthening of the chest. But as we do, we're holding on to the um, thighs underneath the knees right here. That's to help, help us with any core uh, support that we will use as we're go leaning back into our boat it's a reverse bow. Usually you're laying down and you come up with your four, um, your torso and your legs, but sometimes you can go from an upright position, kind of like open up into the boat as well in a reverse bow. And that's what we're doing today. So here in our base bridge with our hands under our knees, we're going to feel our core engage. Just engage it, just, you know, feel as if you're, you're making it nice and, firm and as you're holding onto the knees you should be able to just bring that spine back until you feel the core engage if you're starting from high up you just start to lean back a straight back until you feel your core engage you're not curving the lower back the back is nice and straight and once you're there you're in boat and here we're going to find that balance see if you can release the hands if you can release the hands, go ahead and bring them back. Come on up, lengthen through the legs if you'd like. But coming all the way back up, we're going to sit on our sits bones, move the glutes off to the side. And one more time, we're going to bring the knees up, lean the back, back if you need to, and keeping a hold of the thighs underneath the knees. We're lengthening, we're lifting up through the chest, lengthening from the tailbone all the way through the crown of the head and breathing. And once again, as we're going to hold for the next three to five breath cycles, you can extend the challenge here by releasing a hand, releasing another hand. That's challenging. You can also lift a foot and then lift another foot and you might find you have to compensate. But we're balancing on our sits bones. You can hold on to the knees, but if you can let go, you're using more of the core and more of your balance. And then we'll go ahead, if your feet are lifted, go ahead and bring the feet down and seesaw back up on those sits bones at that fulcrum area you're balanced on for such a short time, we can come on back up and just let our legs rest on the mat. Go ahead and bend the knees one more time. Bring the hands out to the side, feet are about hips distance apart. We're just gonna roll on the glutes from one side. The knees are going to gently fall to one side and the shoulders are sort of twisting over to the other. We're getting a nice ringing action here. Inhale come up to center with the knees and the chest, and then exhale, let them fall away, windshield wipe in opposite direction. So now you're hopefully twisting just gently over to the opposite side as your knee of your knees, where, wherever they're falling towards on the other side. We'll go ahead and inhale all the way back up, exhale, windshield wipe to the other side, and you can do it with a little less, uh, um, you can do it with a faster frequency. You don't have to slowly savor it as before. Now that you've gotten some of the windshield wiping in, it feels nice to maybe feel a nice massage as you're letting the knees move from side to side. All right, we'll come all the way back up here. And one last balancing pose will be on our belly. So making your way onto the belly Sometimes we have a special way to do that, and today it's me just rolling onto my belly from my forearm. Okay, and as we have not been on the belly this entire um, uh, practice, it's probably going to feel really nice to have your hips open up with the support of the mat underneath them. Give a brief cheek rest or brow rest. Give yourself about three 
or four breaths here. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time, to a little bit of space and time, I should say, to let the body unfold. And if you're not just resting the brow, but actually resting your cheek, you'll want to balance out the other side. If you had a couple of breaths on one side, press into the chest, slowly lift the gaze so you can turn and rest on the opposite cheek for a similar amount of time. And once that's done, we're just gonna to return to a centered position on our belly, faces um, gently resting, nose and chin, mouth on the uh, mat. Arms are down to our side. Let's go ahead and have the tops of our feet resting. And if that's okay for you, we're going to inhale, extend through the left leg. Just keep in contact with the mat, with the floor. Just extend that leg down the floor point through the toe. And if you cramp your arch for some reason, you can always flex the foot and just gently wiggle it and, until it stops uh, uh, cramping. Sometimes that just happens, especially if your feet are always um, in tight shoes or you do a lot of walking and not a lot of stretching. Anyhow, let's do this one more time. We're going to inhale, lengthen through the left leg and see if you can engage the left side all the way to the glute, to the hip here, down the quads, down the calves, down the foot, to the toe, even to the big toe. See if you can have that entire limb just active, engaged. And once you do that, inhale, see if you can lift from the foot, just the foot. You might have to gently press into the belly, left hip area, just to lift that foot. And then exhale, let that foot gently land and release. Let the glutes go, let the quads go. Turn your gaze to the opposite side that you were on last, if you can remember. Keep the neck in line with the spine, but just turn the gaze and let the shoulders melt into the mat. If you're lifting them, see if you can release them. Okay, we'll inhale, press into the chest, turn the gaze to the opposite side. Take another deep breath in and out. Press into the chest, bring the face back to center, hovering above the mat once more. We're going to lengthen through the right leg. Inhale, keep in contact with the mat and lengthen through that right leg. Just engage the quad, calf, Point the foot, feel nice and long in that leg. Engage it, see if your knee lifts slightly. And then let it go. You can roll, you can jiggle, roll a little bit on the hips. And then one more time, we're going to inhale, come back onto the belly, inhale and lengthen through that right leg once more. And this time, see if you can get the glutes on your right hip all the way down the muscles um, of the quads, of the calf, of the right foot, all the way down to that big right foot toe. Get that nice and active. And as that's engaged, and you're breathing for about three to five breaths here. Take the next inhale, engaging once more and lifting the right foot, seeing if you can engage the entire leg, lifting the entire leg, not just bending at the right knee, but lifting the entire leg. And then exhale, let that right foot land. You can always roll the ankles, toes, you can wiggle if you need to reset. All right, and then this time, one last movement in our, on our belly. We're going to balance onto the belly and the pelvic region. So extending through the arms and the legs, keeping contact with the mat, inhaling, feeling nice and long, exhaling, feeling engaged core, feeling all the muscles in our arms and legs. Like a five-pointed uh, uh, sea star, we're just going to lengthen. And then inhale, see if you can lift the feet, lift the hands not bending the elbows or the knees, just see if you can lift those. 
and then exhale, bring the feet and the hands down. And we're just balanced on our belly, our chest, our pubic bone for a slight second or two. But we can do that extending it for a little bit longer, a few seconds each time, each round. We'll do that one more time. So inhaling, extending through the arms, bringing the face back to center, hovering above the mat. Extend through the legs and the arms, inhaling deeply, pointing through the feet and the toes, excuse me, the toes, the hands and fingers. And then inhale, lift the feet and the hands. See if you can extend out as if you're being pulled by each extension uh, extended limb and then exhale bring the feet and the hands down you can flex the feet rest on the tips of the toes you can wiggle your toes you can bring the backs of the hands to rest do whatever feels good at this point to counter stretch release any of those muscles that you had engaged deeply in this last locust pose and then we'll meet on our back so if you have a special way to meet on your back, we're moving into Shavasana next. And as usual, I'll be sitting upright, but I'm just going to roll over onto my back for a second. And as you find your way back onto the mat, if you had to roll over, I, I do recommend gently inching your way in slowly back onto the mat, making sure that your neck and your spine are in one long line. And your extended legs, they can have uh, the feet connected and then let the feet roll away from each other. Or you can point the legs out towards the corners of the mat. And the arms extended, just nice and relaxed are your fingers. Palms are up and the belly soft. You can close your eyes or you can keep a soft gaze. And for the next five minutes, enjoy Shavasana. Allow the body to respond to today's practice. And when you hear the three bells, we'll awaken.
bring the mind back to the body, taking note of sounds outside the room, sounds within the room, and finally back to your breath. Notice the air as it enters your nose. Notice the air as it exits. As you begin to reconnect to the body, you can wiggle your fingers, toes. You can rock the body into an upright position, being careful to uh, just avoid the center spine as you're rocking and rolling forward and back on the back. You can also just uh, roll over into a fetal position and then help yourself upright with your forearms and hand. We'll be leaving class with our uh, balanced uh, nostril, alternate nostril breathing exercise uh, to help balance our hemispheres of the body. And all we'll do is bring the le left hand to our chin mudra and right hand to our Vishnu mudra. Sitting, of course, with comfortable, easy seated position or in staff, making sure we're sitting nice and upright bringing the two uh, fingers to the center of the brow if the Vishnu uh, mudra hand position is a little too awkward for you. We'll be holding the right nostril with the right thumb, left nostril closed alternately with the left ring finger or knuckle. Taking a nice deep inhale, close the right nostril and exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close, exhale through the left. Last round. Inhale through the left. Close, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Release the right hand. Release the mudras. Let the breath come back to its natural state. Bring the hands to heart center. Thank you so much for joining me here at the ACC Community Room for Gentle Yoga at 2 p.m. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Namaste. Namaste.